Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of me recapping seasons of American Horror Story. Today's installment, Cult. So personally for me, Cult ranks somewhere in the middle. It's not one of my least favorite seasons and it's not one of my favorite seasons. It's better than Roanoke in my opinion. Please do not come for me in the comments for that. A lot of people really hate Cult and I understand why. I understand why a lot of people hate most seasons of American Horror Story, but I am a fanboy. So I like a lot of them. And this one, let's just be honest, it's better than a lot of people say. It's not one of the worst seasons. It's not like the best season of all time either. Either. It definitely has issues. The political stuff in particular is fucking stupid and I hate it. Evan Peters' performance without praising the character is iconic. While the election storyline is definitely not my favorite, I feel as though the actual cult part of this season is something that makes the season really unique and I feel feel as though the election stuff is really only important within like the first few episodes of the show. After that, the season really does take a turn into its name, cult. It doesn't really talk so much about the politics of the cult. It talks a lot more about the Charles Mansons and Marshall Applewhites and the Jim Jones side of this season. And it's a lot less about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and the politics of 2016. I'm gonna steer clear of as much politics in this video as I possibly can because I don't care that much about about it and it stresses me out. It feels as though having this season come out the year after those events took place, not even a full year, it literally came out September of 2017 and the election was in November of 2016. So Ryan Murphy did not even wait. He did not even wait to write this. He literally wrote it the year after. I'm just gonna gloss over a lot of the um, election plot points because it is one of the weakest parts of this season. So the board, it's very, it's organized very weird and you may also notice there's no lines connecting anybody. And that is because in this season, Season, there is a cult. Wow, what a shocker, guys. There's a cult in the season called Cult. This circle, or I guess square, everybody that is in the cult, and that's a bit of a spoiler, but there are a few characters that are missing from this circle, and they come in later, and I'm gonna explain that situation when we get to it. But just for now, know that there is this cult right here, and they all center around him. He is their leader. His name is Kai Anderson. Kai Anderson is an incel. His whole character is that he believes that women shouldn't be able to lead. It sounds so unpromising for a character, but trust me, he does such a good job. Evan Peters does fabulous job with this character, but it sounds like a recipe for disaster, but it's really not, I promise. It's actually a really good character and the way that he acts is really good in this season. Next, we have Beverly Hope. Now, Beverly, she works for Channel 7 News, I believe. She absolutely devours. She finds herself involved in the cult early on in this season, and I will get into that, but right away, she's not really a main character in the first few episodes. We really only see a couple of her broadcasts and her reports in the first few episodes, and then we learn more about her story. Next, we have Winter Anderson. Winter is Kai Anderson's sister, and right from the first episode, we know that she is the complete opposite as far as politics go to her brother. She is very much pro-Hillary, obviously Kai being pro-Trump, but somehow she still loves her brother. Next, we have honorary main characters, Harrison and Meadow Wilton. They are not necessarily main characters, but it feels wrong not to include them as main characters because Leslie Grossman is in a lot of seasons from now on. This is her first role, but obviously she is a main character in most of the seasons that she's in. So it feels wrong not to give her a big picture. And also even in the context of this season, she appears in a lot of episodes. So she's going to be a main character. That's what I'm going to give her. Billy Eichner, he's only in Apocalypse and this season, and he is a pretty big deal, I guess, in this season. Next, Next we have Allie and Ivy Mayfair Richards. They are a same-sex couple living in Brookfield. Field Heights, I believe is what the town is called in this show. Uh, it's a small town in Michigan and they own a bar, a restaurant in town. Ivy makes the food and Allie is like the person that greets people. She's like the face of the restaurant. They also have a son named Oz and he's kind of a big deal this season. And finally, for the main characters, we have Dr. Rudy Vincent. We don't know a whole lot about Rudy Vincent in the first few episodes, but we learn a lot more as we get into this season. He is is Allie's therapist. And one thing about Allie I forgot to mention, she has quite the laundry list of phobias and fears. And
and we'll get into it as the episodes go on and on. I relate to her, I do, because girl, I would be in the same position, to be honest with you. Those are our main characters. I'm gonna go over the side characters a little bit. Starting up here, we have Detective Jack Samuels. He is a cop. He is in Kai's back pocket. So they are working together. Then we have Gary K. Longstreet. Now, Gary is the owner of one of the grocery stores in town. Also, I think it's so funny that this actor continuously always in this show plays like the typical like hick Republican role. Just if you didn't know, this is Cher's son, who's also happens to be trans. That's kind of iconic right there. Next, we have this flop character. I gave a picture to because he becomes important way later on this season. I believe his name is Speedwagon. He is a part of the cult as well. And then in the center here, we have B.B. Babbitt, played by Miss Mother, Frances Conroy. I'll get more into her later, but she comes in around halfway through the season. I'm not gonna spoil anything about her. You'll figure it out later. Next, we have Bob Thompson. He is also a reporter, or I guess he works for the same uh, news outlet that Beverly does. And then we have Serena, who also works for the same company as Beverly. Also, this is Emma Roberts' first season back since Freak Show, I believe, because she wasn't in Hotel and she wasn't in Roanoke. She was actually supposed to be in Hotel, and I don't remember what role she was supposed to play, but I think they had to cut her for scheduling conflicts because she was also working on Scream Queens at the time. So um, yeah, a lot of people want me to cover Scream Queens, but I've never even seen that show. And I want to watch it, but I've heard it's absolutely offensive. So I don't, I don't know how I would be able to cover that in a way that is not offensive in itself. So then we have Sally Keffler, played by Miss Mayor Winningham. I think that's how you say her name. This is Mother, by the way. Um, she was also in Coven, Freak Show, and Hotel. I don't think she was in Roanoke, but she's in quite a number of seasons and she absolutely serves each time. She's running for city council against Kai. Now, Kai, somewhere in the middle of the season, starts to run for city council, and this is his opponent. And as I said before, this is Oz, who is Allie and Ivy's son. This is more of a cameo role for Jamie Brewer, who has been in previous seasons before. She gets like one line this season, which is so unfortunate and such a waste of her talent. She is in the season, and she is in the scum cult from the 70s, uh, and its leader is none other than Valerie. Valerie Solanas. Yes, the one that tried to kill Andy Warhol in the, I believe, 60s. I don't know if the cult existed, but the manifesto definitely did exist. And she was kind of known to be a loon. She is played by Lena Dunham. Why is she in this season? I don't know. Anyway, that is all the characters. So uh, without further ado, let's just get on into the recap. All right, if everybody could open their books and turn to page November 8th, 2016 for a little flashback. This is when the season actually starts. Uh, it is election night of 2016, the infamous election where Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were running against each other and absolutely nobody in America wanted either of them to win. So this is the opening scene of this season. We get a couple of clips from the whole election media frenzy that was happening at the time, where Trump was announcing his candidacy and Hillary was announcing her candidacy and just all the chaos that came with all of that. And then we finally get the clip of them announcing that Trump has won the election. Shocker, you know, spoilers, if you guys didn't know that. We see this man and he begins to, by the way, this is Kai, if you forgot. He begins to hump his TV screen. And in the same town, we begin to see these two start sobbing. Actually, in particular her, when she sees the news and she begins cursing out at the TV and screaming, crying, going absolutely ballistic at this news. These two are liberal. And so they're upset at the fact that for the next four years, they are going to be under a Republican president. Apparently Sarah Paulson in real life also had a very similar reaction and she was like oh it was just easy i just had to go back to that place anyway she was absolutely fucking serving in this scene suddenly we begin to see these two worry about the state of america within the next four years and then we cut back to kai's house where in winter's bedroom she is on the phone she's all uh, upset kai comes in her room and his face is covered in cheeto dust he has like the trump 
to pay swoop. So yeah, the opening of this season is not very promising. I prom it, it gets better, I promise. It's just, it's very fucking stupid in the beginning. It does get pretty good, in my opinion at least, but here it's just, it's so unserious. We then skip down almost three months later, but they don't tell us, so... Also, just a thing, this season, the timeline makes absolutely no sense because it's told all out of order. So I am so sorry if this doesn't make sense. I'm gonna do my absolute best. I think this one's gonna be a challenge. This is also the longest timeline. It goes like past the board. So <clears throat> we're gonna figure out how that works. But anyway, for now, just now that this could not make any sense. So yeah, let's get on into it. It is now three months after the election, but they don't tell you that. So there's no context clues or anything. You're just meant to think it's like right after the election, but it's not, it's three months. So we are now in February of 2017. It is day one, February 27th, 2017. We see Oz and he is reading a comic book. And what do you know? On this comic book, it is Twisty the Clown from Freak Show. We learn from the 50s, he became kind of like a folklore legend in the horror community and he got his own little comic book series, which Oz is reading. Now, this triggers Ali's phobia because she has a fear of clowns. And if you ask me what any of the phobia's names are, I'm not gonna be able to tell you, but she has like 50 phobias and I'm not gonna be able to tell you any of the names. So she grabs the comic book and then begins having a panic attack and her wife has to come in and calm her down, which girl, I am right there with you. I have such a fear of not even clowns, but just like such a fear of fucking creepy ass bitches. Twisty's fucking creepy. Next day we see Kai, he is at city council and he is giving an anti-semitic speech about why they should tear down some jewish memorial or something this part of the season is just not my favorite but the city councilman basically dismisses him and says that he's fucking stupid basically he says that he should go back to 4chan so then uh, we get the introduction to dr vincent and ali has a session with him where she reveals that she hasn't been this riled up and scared since 9 11 and i have that on the board 9 11 2001 if you don't know what 9 11 is for all I'm not gonna explain it here. Allie meets Ivy in the wake of 9-11 and Ivy helps Allie cope with her fears. She also has the um, fear of going out in public sometimes, especially when like world events like this are happening and we get that vibe from her. She says that she hasn't had this much fear since 9-11, but Ivy was there to coddle her and make her feel better. We then see Allie visit a grocery store and in it is this Trump supporter man named Gary. He puts on this MAGA hat and as soon as she sees this, she's like, oh, okay. And then while at the store, she is attacked by clowns babes and these clowns come out of fuck ass nowhere. There's nobody else in the store. And then all of a sudden there's like 10 clowns and they're having sex in the produce aisle, throwing shit around. They're on scooters chasing her down the aisles and she's throwing bottles of rosé at them. Allie then escapes and Ivy talks to the police, that being Mr. Samuels up here. And he claims that... Gary saw absolutely nothing in the aisles and Ivy does not believe Allie because why would she if the story is not corroborated by the one other person that was actually in the store? This kind of causes her to have more of a panic attack because of the fact that there are now these fucking clowns chasing her and that's already one of her fears is clowns. So, so then it is now day three, March 1st. These two put up a wanted ad for a babysitter because Allie is going to start returning to work because she hasn't been to the restaurant in a few months at this point. Ever since the election, she has skipped out on going to work because of her fear of going out in public. Like I said, it's a very big deal to her. So <clears throat> they post this help wanted sign now that she is going back to work. And look who answers it. Queen Winter right here. She answers their help wanted ad and they end up hiring her to be Oz's new babysitter. We then skip down two weeks. It is now day 18, March 16th, 2017. So Kai is walking around outside and he sees this group of Latin Americans. He pisses inside of a bottle and throws the bottle at them and then begins to basically racially harass them. Then they retaliate and he gets beaten up and he is sent to the hospital. And he claims that this is a racially motivated attack on him because he's a white man and he has so many issues. We then move down to day 24, March 22nd of 2017. While babysitting Oz, Winter shows him videos on the dark web of people uh, getting murdered to quote, desensitize him to what is about to come. And across the street, Allie and Ivy's neighbors are murdered by Kai's 
cult and they are in clown costumes the same clown costumes that Ali encountered in the store and they are killed in very gruesome fashion so then he leaves to go see what's up and winter comes along and winter is like I can't see through the window let me hoist you up she literally holds him up so that he can literally see the Changs get beheaded. Allie and Ivy then return home to sirens everywhere. Oz has told the police what he believes to be true, but Winter tells them that she didn't see any of it. And this bitch, the moms are like, why would you like go out and show him this? And she was like, I didn't see anything. We were in here the whole time. And that is basically where we leave episode one. Oh, and then Samuels at the end of the episode tells them that he believes it to be a murder suicide. So there's definitely a cover up going on here because that was definitely a double murder. And they left a smiley face painted on the wall. All right, so episode two begins the same day as the last episode ended. We see a brief argument with these two and they are arguing about how their relationship just is not the same anymore since the election. They make up and then start making out. Their son starts crying in his room and he has a nightmare about Twisty the Clown. Now they tell him that it's gonna be okay and they take his comic book away. And as Oz gets comforted by these two, he absolutely rejects Ali in favor of Ivy. It is now day 25, March 23rd, 2017, one day before my birthday, by the way. After the release of the video of the gruesome murder of the Changs, the council has an open seat. Keep in mind, it's been one day since this happened. There is an open seat on the city council and Kai has elected himself to take that position. We are introduced to Harrison and Meadow Wilton and they are already moving into that house that the Changs lived in right before they were murdered and this kind of upsets Allie and Ivy because it has been one day since they literally were gruesomely murdered in there and there's blood all over the walls. Allie then peeks inside the house and is caught by these two. He is wearing a beekeeper uniform so that kind of clues us in that he is a beekeeper. Also do you like my shirt? It's kind of giving bees just a little bit. Also this season's color is yellow if you didn't know so that's why I'm wearing this. Yes he is wearing a beekeeper uniform and this scares the fuck out of Allie because she has a fear of bees because of course she does. We get a couple minor characters, Roger and Pedro. They work for Allie and Ivy at the Butchery on Main, which is what their restaurant is called. A fight breaks out between these two. One of them is being absolutely racist to the other, and then the other one is like, get out of my space. So they get into a fight, and this is broken up by these two. We then get a scene where Oz returns home from school, is pissed at Miss Winter for lying to the police and lying to his moms about what they saw. As an apology, she gifts Oz a toy Twisty the Clown and then extends her pinky, makes Oz take her pinky and they call it pinky power in this show. It's basically just like Kai's manipulative game where if he takes your pinky, he has to know every single thing about you and if he catches you in a lie, he'll know and it's this big threatening thing. And he did it to his sister who is now doing it to him and we'll see it a couple more times in the season. Basically, she initiates this game where Oz has to tell her what he's scared of. Then she takes Oz over to meet the new neighbors. Allie and Ivy return home to see that they're gone. So they go over to the new neighbor's house with Winter and Oz is playing playing with the bees in the backyard of Harrison and they meet their new neighbors, Meadow and Harrison. And this scene is absolutely iconic. Leslie Grossman eats down this entire scene. When she's talking about her melanoma, she references Beyonce Lemonade. It makes sense that they are part of the hive. We also learn that Allie has a fear of holes, which I didn't know was a thing until I watched this season. So it triggers her phobia. They leave. Back at their house, they get a notification from Ivy's phone that says that there was a break-in at their restaurant. And Oz, after clinging to his mom, he suggests that Allie, or maybe it's her who suggests that she go and turn the alarm off manually from the restaurant. So Allie goes, why would they be sending Allie Allie there when everybody here knows that she has not had a good couple months. 
Why would she be going into a potentially dangerous situation with an intruder when she's known to have fears and phobias? So that's just a little flaw in the plot right there. She goes, turns the alarm off, and when she goes to discover if anybody's inside, she discovers the dead body of Roger, who was the racist guy that was threatening Pedro earlier in the episode. Jack Samuels then suspects that it is Pedro who did this because, because he's a cop and of course he's going to suggest that it's a POC. And he uses the fact that they got into an argument earlier in the episode as quote evidence. We then jump down to day 30, March 28th, 2017. Allie has installed new locks and bars on her windows and doors in reaction to her phobias getting worse when she discovered the dead body of her employee in her store. So the last couple of weeks have not been good for her. So she installs these new locks on her house to make her house break in proof. Ivy not so subtly calls her therapist Vincent to come over and have a chat with her. She also reveals that she bought a gun, which is so out of character for her by the way, from Harrison, her new next door neighbor who has plenty of them. Oh, we get a scene, this is a really good scene by the way, where Kai visits Allie when no one else is home. He basically challenges her liberal belief to accept everybody into your home when the bar are on her house and she is not letting him inside. Gotcha liberal moment, I guess. While Ivy is at work at the house, Winter has arrived to help Allie and Oz. And while Oz is in bed, Allie gets ready for a bubble bath. And during this bath, she is seduced by Winter who tries to sleep with her. Oh my goodness. And then randomly they hear that there is an intrusion in the house and they go out to check. And this randomly then a power outage happens. and and everybody's lights all turn off, even at the restaurant. This causes Winter to leave. Next door neighbor Harrison shows up and suggests that it's a terrorist attack and that she should start getting really scared for what's to come. So she starts freaking the fuck out and she calls her wife who's at work and asks for her to come home. But since there's so much more work to do at the restaurant, she sends Pedro to bring some flashlights and candles and Allie's phone charger. Meanwhile, at the house, Allie is all distraught. She wakes Oz up. There's noises all in the house. Allie sees a bunch of clown masks. And so she grabs Oz and she makes it to the back door. And she says when the door opens that Oz and her need to run out as fast as humanly possible because the big bad boogeyman is gonna get them if they don't hurry. So she opens the door and keep in mind, she has a gun in hand. She is greeted by Pedro from the restaurant and she thinking that he's one of the killer clowns pulls the gun on him and shoots him this flop storyline, by the way. It's just not that good. It's really not, it's not my cup of tea at all. That's basically where we leave episode two. All right, so episode three opens with a flashback to a couple days before. It is now again day 25, March 23rd. We meet a couple of flop characters named Rosie and Mark and they are husband and wife, and they're meeting with Rosie's therapist, Vincent, and he is congratulating her because she has overcome her fear of coffins. And I did not put her picture on the board because she's not that important, but as they go home, we see the cult has broken into her house and installed these two huge white coffins in their house. So Girlie basically overcame her fear for nothing because she's gonna die in this fucking coffin. We jump down to five days later. It is the same day as the last episode ended, day 30, March 28th, 2017. Ivy and the police have arrived to the scene of the crime and they are calming Allie down. And we learned that in Michigan, they have a stand your ground law. They basically reassure Allie that, that she most likely will not get in any trouble for this, which is convenient. We then jump down to the next day. It is day 31, March 29th. After the shooting, uh, Allie has had the whole community turn against her. We see her neighbors come to her door at one point telling her that she is a racist for killing Pedro. It's kind of done in poor taste because we have these two in sombreros to like sympathize with the Latino community, which is questionable on Ryan Murphy's part. Allie is basically shunned by her whole town for killing this man. The police have found the two bodies that were put 
in Coffins. Reporting on it is Miss Beverly. I think we've gotten a couple of other random scenes with her where she's giving a report on certain crime scenes, but this is the first where she reports on the situation in the house. But like I said before, this is my mother right here. She reveals that the painted on symbol of the smiley face in the house is the same symbol that was found at the Chang's house. She then uses the word serial killer, which is supposed to scare everybody in Brookfield Heights. Later that night, Ivy and Allie witness the news as she is reporting on the murders. They begin to see and hear this truck driving past their house, spraying a random chemical on their lawn and on the street. And they are a little spooked by this because of what there is nothing scheduled and this truck does not have a permit to do so. The next morning, it is day 32, March 30th. Allie goes into the front yard to investigate the whole um, random chemical situation from last night and discovers about 30 dead birds in their yard. Ivy goes outside as well and she sees them as well. Winter has returned to their house and Allie apologizes to Winter for her behavior. As Winter is about to go upstairs for Oz, she says that they have a visitor and Allie was like, we weren't expecting any visitors. So they go into their living room and it's this bare ass naked man in their living room who apparently replied to an ad that was supposed to be by these two. It was written by these two and these girlies figure out that the neighbors from hell here are trying to make their lives as miserable as they can. So Allie finds this ad online and talks with Vincent about it. Vincent agrees to help Allie take the ad down. And as Allie arrives to work, she is bombarded by these protesters who are protesting her car, basically not allowing her to get inside her work. Kai comes and gets the protesters to leave. And Allie is a little bit spooked by this because this just shows that this man has power and she is a little gagged and gooped. She doesn't really know what's going on here. They come home and find Oz with Winter and Oz has has a guinea pig and they are like, well, we are a no pets household winter. I am so sorry, but he cannot keep the guinea pig. And winter reveals that it was the next door neighbors who brought the guinea pig over, which is so racist, by the way. We see Allie call Harrison and basically scald him for the whole situation. They see the chemical truck again. And as she goes outside to try and stop it, she is nearly run over and ends up tripping and hitting her face on the pavement. And then she begins to have a bloody nose. Then the next day, it is March 31st, Ivy, Allie, and Oz are out to dinner. They're having ice cream at their restaurant. And as they get home, Allie decides to let Oz keep Mr. Guinea because Oz has really taken to the animal. When they return home, their front door has been unlocked. So they walk in cautiously and Oz goes to find Mr. Guinea who has been exploded in the microwave. Oh my goodness. And they see it happen. Oh, also they do see the smiley face on their door, which apparently means that they are marked by the killer. Allie runs over to the Wilton's house, just assuming that they have done this. She slaps them around and accuses them of taking the one thing that Oz loved, which would be his guinea pig. Allie then threatens to kill both of them if they mess with her or her family again, which is really bold coming from her. Oh, we get a pinky power scene with Kai and Harrison, where Harrison wishes his wife dead. Also, I think I forgot to mention, Harrison is gay. They got married because they were best friends and they both realized that they were gonna be single forever if they didn't get married at their age. So they got married and Harrison then tells Kai in this pinky power that he wishes her dead. Allie presents the evidence to Samuels about the trucks, the clowns, the Mr. Guinea situation, all the murders, everything is all connected. And there must be some kind of wide conspiracy against her because everything that's happened lately seems to be at her expense. Before anybody can even blink an eye in this situation, Oz curses from upstairs and his moms run upstairs to see what's going on. We see that Oz has been emailed a video of Allie and Winter fooling around in the bathtub from episode two. And this causes Ivy to storm out with Oz and she claims that they are over because obviously Allie has not been the best spouse as of late. Ivy has had enough of this. So she storms out with Oz and Allie is left alone in the house. And as they go outside to see what the commotion is, they see Harrison outside talking to the police covered in blood. They, they hear him scream, that Meadow is missing and he, was he woke up covered in blood and his wife is now missing. 
So we're gonna get into that in the next few episodes. So episode four is essentially just a bunch of flashbacks to random events throughout the season, a lot of which take place before day one on February 27th. So the majority of them occupy this section of the board. In the opening scene, we see everybody gearing up for the election. We see Beverly Hope reporting on the scene at the polls, and she is joined by her colleague Serena, who we see votes for Trump. We also see Harrison and Meadow, and both of them have absolutely no idea who to vote for. Meadow votes for Oprah. Harrison votes for Gary Johnson. Kai and Gary vote for Trump, and Gary has had his arm very recently cut off. We're gonna get into that, but basically he storms into the polling station and causes a commotion. Winter and Ivy both vote for Hillary, and Allie hesitates and then decides to vote for Jill Stein instead. We then skip down to the next day, November 9th, 2016, a reference to the episode title, 11-9. Harrison is working at a gym as a personal trainer and in walks Kai Anderson. He meets Harrison for the first time. Harrison becomes Kai's personal trainer. Harrison returns home to Meadow, who breaks the news to him that they are to be evicted in three days. We then jump down a couple weeks to November 20th. Kai has been trained by Harrison for a few weeks now, and Harrison is now living in a motel, by the way, and he is constantly being bullied by his boss, Vinny. Kai notices the homophobia that Harrison has to deal with, so eventually Harrison kills his boss and takes the body with Kai to Harrison's hotel and in walks Meadow, who is absolutely not surprised by what's going on somehow, and she decides to join the cult as well. A month later, on December 28th, 2016, we see Beverly reporting on the headless body of Vinny that's found in the landfill. Later that night, Beverly is confronted by Kai, and Kai recruits her to be a part of his cult and manipulates her into believing that she will have equal treatment to Kai and that the cult will be led by both of them. However, we'll get to see later on. It's really just led by Kai and Beverly really has no say in anything that goes on and she was just manipulated by him. December 29th, 2016, Kai arranges to kill Serena, who is Beverly's competition at her network. A few days later, on January 2nd, 2017, Beverly reports on the missing head being found because after she agrees to be a part of Kai's cult, everything that the cult does now can be reported by Beverly and she can start shaping the media around Kai's vision to have everybody be scared of everything. We jump back to November 7th, 2016, so just one day before the election. While at a Hillary rally, Ivy meets Meadow for the first time, and she is sexually harassed by Gary, who is protesting against the Hillary supporters. Winter and Ivy then go for lunch together and decide that they need to get payback on Gary, so they tie him up in an abandoned building and leave him there all night so that he can no longer vote. And at the end of the episode, we jump down again to election day. It is November 8th, the next day after Gary was tied up. Kai finds him and attempts to free him, but there's no keys to the handcuffs, so he has to saw his own hand off in order to break free of the cuffs so that he can go cast his vote as a red-blooded American. So yeah, that's basically where this episode ends. It's really a filler episode, if I'm being quite honest with you. Not a whole lot happens, but yeah, let's get on into episode five. So this episode, episode five, features about a month time jump from the last episode. And there are a couple discrepancies here, but we know that it has been that long because Ivy has filed for divorce from Allie since the episode where she found out that Allie was cheating on her with Winter. Courts have given Allie supervised visitation with Oz. We see Beverly Hope showing her latest broadcast to her boss, Bob, of the Wilton home. And like I said, this doesn't really make sense. It wouldn't really be a month later because then that essentially means that Meadow has been missing for a month, but I really can't see any 
other way that it makes sense if it's not a month. So it's either really lazy writing or this event happened a few weeks beforehand. I don't really know and I don't really care that much. Bob also refuses to air the death of Serena. He points out that crime is on an all-time low and trying to get people scared is pointless because there's literally no reason to be scared according to him. Then Beverly threatens to reveal that she was sleeping with him pre-death and that would just absolutely ruin his reputation. Bob in return tries to fire her and she says that um, she cannot be fired because she's the only black reporter that this company has. Winter reveals to Kai that upon polling people in town, not that many people actually know about Kai or that he's even running for city council, so therefore his support is very lacking. Beverly then suggests that it could be because the news is not sh getting people scared enough. Kai and Beverly then come up with a plan to kill Bob so that she can be in charge of the news station. Oh my goodness, and then we get the reveal of the final member of the cult, and that person is Ivy. Oh, an awful reveal. And if you remember, we saw Ivy in the last episode cahooting around with Winter. This suggests that Winter and Ivy have at least known each other since the election. Ivy is revealed to be a part of this cult, which is big T. So now that it's been revealed that she's part of the cult, I'm gonna put her up here with the rest of them. A few days later, see it is now day 63, April 30th, Allie wakes up from a nightmare uh, where she has holes all over her skin, as in like the honeycomb holes that she's been scared of this whole season and she begins scratching at them in her nightmare and she wakes up and sees that she has scratch marks all over her so she books a session with dr vincent we go back a couple days again to day 58 april 25th again and the cult breaks in to Bob's house finds that he has a gimp in the attic interestingly enough so they go upstairs kill the gimp and then kill him while recording it because also keep in mind her cameraman RJ is a part of this cult as well so he records his death in the next morning they're planning on airing the tape to get people scared also keep in mind they're all still wearing clown costumes so you wouldn't be able to tell who the killers were this causes Beverly to be in charge of channel 7 we get a flashback to specifically five weeks ago which would be March 23rd 2017 RJ, who I forgot to put up here, but that is the cameraman of Beverly. He shows remorse when killing the two girlies that were put in the coffins in episode, I believe it was three. And so yeah, that's how I know that this takes place about a month later because this is five weeks from that date, which is one week before episode three ends. So then we move back down to day 63. It's again April 30th. Allie is left alone in the house for the last month because Ivy has taken Oz and uh, she begins to get really fucking scared lately. And she snoops around Harrison's house and goes in the backyard, finds Meadow buried alive in a hole. Presumably she's just been in a hole for a month. This triggers her fear of holes because it's quite literally a grave. So she runs back into the house and is chased by Meadow and is greeted at the window and she reveals to Allie the shocking news that there is a cult in this town and everybody is a part of it, including her wife. But before Allie can even question Meadow about any of this, Meadow is taken again by Harrison. Cut to Beverly and Kai talking about how the other night with Bob and the Gimp, things could have gone over a lot smoother. And a couple people there were being a little squeamish, such as RJ and Ivy as well were being a little squeamish about it. So they decide that they are going to take out their weak link, which would be RJ. And so all the members of the cult, they take a nail gun and shoot nails into his skull. And they test Ivy's loyalty by having her go first. And so once RJ is dead, they know that everybody is loyal to come. We get a flashback to September 23rd, 2014, where Kai's parents uh, kill themselves. The mom kills the dad because the dad is abusive. The mom then kills herself. So this is like three years ago when Kai is home for college. He then calls his brother, who just so happens to be Dr. Vincent. 
Oh, we don't know if he's in the cult or not. We just know that he is Kai's brother, which would also make Winter his sister. Vincent then comes up with the bright idea to put his parents in the guest bedroom and cover the whole room in lye, which apparently would mask the smell. So for three years now, his parents have just been in a locked guest bedroom, decaying right there on the guest bed, which is absolutely fucking foul. We then get uh, a flashback to November 24th, 2014, about two months later. Winter comes home for her Thanksgiving break and Kai shows Winter the bodies of their parents and she is obviously very upset about this. And that's basically where episode five ends. So the episode opens May 1st, which would be day 64. This episode is kind of told out of order. We are at Kai's rally and all of a sudden we hear gunshots in the background and it is revealed when the camera pans to Allie, she is the one holding the gun. We cut backwards to the day before, back when Allie was left alone by Meadow and she hung up the phone on Ivy, she gets a call from Dr. Vincent who tells her to take her meds. She lies to Dr. Vincent and tells him that she is gonna take her meds. Allie then arrives back at Harrison's house and takes Meadow to her restaurant for the night. Here, Meadow reveals all the cult's secrets to Allie, all the big tea, and everything regarding what's been happening to her in the last two or three months. She explains that Ivy joined the cult to try and get custody of Oz and that the goal was to scare everybody in town so that Kai could get in a position of power. We get plenty of flashbacks. Uh, we get one to December 10th, 2016. Meadow begins to fall in love with Kai. Here we cut to just earlier on in the day when Meadow is tied up by Harrison. This is either March 31st or April 30th. I can't really decide because we do get a scene in episode three where Harrison is covered in blood, if you remember, and the police are questioning where the hell Meadow is. So either this whole scene where Harrison is covered in blood is either a ruse or it's actually when Meadow tries to leave the cult. I'm not entirely sure. I think it might have just been there to scare everybody and then a whole month later is when Meadow actually betrays the cult and the cult puts her in the hole. On this day, April 30th, Meadow tries to leave the cult and Kai ties her up. We then get a flashback to April 3rd. We meet Sally Kepler. She reveals that she is going to run against Kai for city council. We then jump to November 9th, 2016. So just one day after the election, Ivy is hanging out with Winter because if you remember in the episode where they tied up Gary, they became close and that is when their relationship started. Ivy meets Kai and we get a scene where Ivy basically confesses to hating her wife so much that she's willing to join a cult to take her down. We get another flashback to June 11th, 2006. We see Oz is born. Ivy is incredibly jealous of Allie because she always wanted to be the one to carry their son and obviously Allie was the one to do so. Then we jump to the present day again. It is May 1st. Allie takes Meadow to Dr. Vincent's office in the middle of the night and has her spill the beans to him about the whole cult situation. And Dr. Vincent, he is not convinced at all at this point. Allie then leaves to go talk to Sally Keffler to try and get an ally on her side. And after Allie arrives, the cult arrives shortly after and attacks Sally, frames her death as a suicide. Allie is in the the bathroom and is seen by Ivy who spares her life. Later that night, Ali returns to Vincent's office and finds that Meadow has just up and left because she gets a text from Kai. So it is the next morning, Ali has decided to go to Kai's rally and there she finds Meadow with a gun and she starts shooting people out of nowhere. So it is revealed that Meadow was the assailant from the first scene of the episode. Allie then takes the gun from Meadow after Meadow shoots herself. Oh, and I forgot to mention, she also shoots Kai in the leg. Allie is arrested and we get a small flashback at the very end of the episode to the day before where Kai, after tying Meadow up, seduces her and gets her to plan an assassination attempt on him to manipulate the people's view of Kai as this hero that survived an assassination attempt. And so this whole thing for Meadow was a ruse. It was a whole lie that she's been telling Allie this whole time. Yeah, that's where we leave episode six. All right.
right, so episode seven is one of my least favorite episodes. It features like 75% of the episode is a flashback. We get a scene where the infamous Valerie Solanas tries to kill Andy Warhol. And as we know, that actually happened in real life on June 3rd, 1968. Back in the present day, it is May 2nd. We learn that Kai has won his election for city council after the assassination attempt did its job in convincing the people that he is a hero. Beverly becomes a little disgruntled with the cult feeling as though she does not have a place in it anymore and she is approached by BB Babbitt. This is my mother right here by the way. She convinces Beverly along with the other girls to join her for a little story time. This is now day 71, May 8th, by the way. BB reveals the story to these girls about the scum cult of the 1960s and how the scum cult who was led by Valerie Solanas was actually the Zodiac. So we learned through flashbacks that the scum cult came up with this idea to kill as many men as possible because Valerie Solanas was a very famous misandrist and hated all men for the simple fact that she had been abused as a child and was a sex worker in the 60s. So she had not had very many good run-ins with men. So she started this cult to kill as many men as possible. Basically, somebody was taking credit for their work and passing it off under the Zodiac Killer. So BB claims to these girls that the Zodiac Killer never even existed and it was these girls that was doing it. In the present day though, we get a scene between Kai and Winter where Kai reveals to Winter that he has come up with a name for their cult called Fit. Fear is truth, which is kind of a play on scum. He then tells Winter that Harrison's idea was men lead, women bleed. This enrages the girls and later that night all three of them kill Harrison because they have decided to join BB Babbitt in this renaissance of scum. The next day, it is day 73, May 10th, Harrison's body is discovered in a nearby bog and on the scene is Beverly Hope reporting on the situation. Kai watches the news as it's happening and what do you know, BB Babbitt is sitting right next to him. And we're gonna get into a little bit more about their relationship and how they even know each other in episode 10, but for now, let's move on to episode eight. So I apologize for the audio sounding really bad. I didn't realize that until very recently. It is now day 83, May 20th. We get a scene where Vincent visits his brother Kai and sees his militia and is kind of freaked out about the whole situation. Rudy now kind of begins to be a little bit more sympathetic towards Allie and realize that, yeah, Kai might be a cult leader, actually. The women of Fit become a little bit disgruntled by their treatment as of late, now that the militia is a thing here here, and uh, they decide that they need to do something about it. Beverly says that she no longer believes Kai, that they are going to have equal power. Winter says that they cannot kill Kai because Kai is still her brother, and they more or less just need to take him out of power. We get a flashback to Halloween 2015. We get a flashback to Halloween 2015. Kai, Kai and Winter go to this haunted house that's like fucking creepy as fuck and it has these like people tied up and shit and basically long story short they free all the people and kill the twisted pastor that was administering them drugs and shit to stay there. So when Winter tries to go and convince Kai that the women deserve equal treatment in the cult, Kai then decides that he needs to have a messiah baby with his sister. So he plans, yes, you heard that right. He plans to get Jack Samuels, the police officer, to have sex with Winter as Kai is having sex with Samuels and there's just gonna be a transfer of energy happening there and he's going to impregnate his sister. We skip down a couple days. It's now day 85, May 22nd. Allie is then released from the psych ward. She argues with Vincent, who did not believe her before about Kai, but now does. And this is where he reveals to her that Kai is his brother. And this devastates her because obviously she now knows that the reason why all this was happening to her is because Kai was able to get into Allie's medical records from his brother. We get the scene, oh goodness, we get the threesome with Samuels, Winter, and Kai, and it's so uncomfortable. They both object 
to the whole thing and end up leaving and Kai is unsatisfied. It is now day 86, May 23rd. Ali invites Kai over for dinner. Yes, you heard that right. She invites Kai over for dinner. She basically claims that he has gotten her over her fears and you know, it wasn't the medication, it wasn't her wife, it was Kai. Ali then also reveals that his brother is planning to out him as the leader of this cult. He at first doesn't believe her, but then she provides proof. Winter's punishment for not participating in the Messiah baby situation is her littering around the town. It's the opposite of community service, basically. So she's littering and Samuels comes to bring her lunch and then he reveals how he met Kai. On June 16th, 2016, Samuels meets Kai while Kai is doing a drug deal. Samuels then makes Kai his B-I-T-C-H. But then a few weeks later, it is now August 31st, 2016. He helps Samuels realize that he's gay. Then Jack tries to, in the present day, have sex with Winter, and Winter wants absolutely nothing to do with this. So she grabs his gun and kills him right then and there. Later that night, we see Fit capturing Beverly, who has been framed by Winter for the murder of Samuels, and Vincent, who Ali turned over to Kai. Kai then decides it's best to kill Vincent. So Vincent dies and he places Beverly in the quote hole. I'm not sure what that is, but she gets placed in a hole. And then Fit welcomes their newest member. Who might that be, you ask? Ali Mayfair Richards. Oh my goodness, Miss Girl has joined the cult. We jump down to day 88. It is now May 25th. I don't know if you can see that too well. Basically, Kai is explaining to his militia different cults that have ex existed uh, in the past, including Marshall Applewhite, David Koresh, and Jim Jones. And Evan Peters plays all three of these. And I did not put this on the board because it doesn't actually happen. We only see like 30 seconds of each one. He plays each of those cult leaders. We jump down to day 92, May 29th. Kai announces to the city council that he plans to run for US Senate in 2018, which would be a year and a half away. We see Ali question Ivy why she joined a cult and they have a whole argument about it. And Ivy claims that she hated Ali so much that she was willing to drive her crazy in order to get Oz all to herself. Oh, and then Winter shows up and gives them instructions on how to escape a cult from WikiHow. And then the militia arrives and takes them all to Kai's house where with Beverly, these three girlies join and Kai forces all of them, including the men in the militia, to drink poisoned Kool-Aid, which is where the name of the episode comes from, drink the Kool-Aid. And then also that's a reference to Jim Jones. Kai then reveals that there was nothing in the Kool-Aid and it was just Kool-Aid. Everybody here was just proving that they were willing to die for Kai. This causes Beverly to have a mental breakdown. And the next day, it is now day 93, May 30th, Allie and Ivy are preparing to leave, going very quietly, shutting down all their bank accounts and everything. And when they go and try to pick up Oz from school, they notice that someone has already picked him up. So this is scary as fuck for them. So they run right to Kai's house. Oz was picked up by Winter, who claims that he will be safe there with her. Then Kai reveals to these two that he believes Oz is his son because he has been a donor at the IVF clinic that they got impregnated at. So these two allow Kai to have a sleepover with Oz and <clears throat> Allie returns home with Ivy and she makes dinner for them. And over dinner, she begins to tell Ivy how she felt in the mental ward in those three weeks that Ivy abandoned her. She claims that she was cured of her fears and Ivy begins to eat dinner. Allie claims that she is no longer scared of anything thanks to Kai and his cult. Ivy begins to scoff at this and say, you know, you're just never gonna get through it. It's a passing phase. And this is when it's revealed that Miss Girl, 
poisoned Ivy because Ivy starts coughing up blood. So Allie kills Ivy. Oh my goodness, a twist, a twist. The next day, it is day 94, June 1st. Allie goes to her fertility clinic as if she didn't just kill her wife the night before, gets them to forge the paperwork that Kai is Oz's father. So Allie invites Kai over for dinner and she breaks the news to him that they are gonna be a big happy family and Oz is finally gonna get to know his real dad. Obviously, this is all a manipulation. Allie is not actually in love with Kai. Oz is not Kai's son. She's just trying to get Kai to believe her. Then the two of them put Ivy's body in Kai's murder room with Vincent and Kai's parents. And that's where the episode ends. All right, so we have arrived at the penultimate episode of Cult. And as you can see, the timeline goes quite far. I don't even think you can see that in the camera. We get a flashback to October 19th, 2016. Winter's friend is assaulted by Kai while um, she basically provokes him while they watch one of the presidential debates. And this causes Kai to get signed up for anger management issue classes with none other than his therapist, Bibi Babbitt. Bibi employs Kai to unleash female rage. Uh, basically, this her whole plan this whole time, Kai, to start this cult in order to unleash the female rage. We jump down to day nine. 95, June 2nd, 2017, Kai begins to destroy evidence in his house of the whole cult situation now that he's running for Senate. He can't let anything get in his way of that seat. Winter and Allie are wiping the entire ice cream truck that they use, completely painting it, wiping it down, making sure that the police don't find it. Kai gets the idea to kill 1,000 pregnant women. He's telling the story of Sharon Tate and the Manson cult back in the 60s. Kai is inspired by this because Sharon Tate was pregnant at the time. He believes that he needs to do something radical like that and kill 1,000 pregnant women. So on June 3rd, the next morning, Fit all break into Planned Parenthood. Gary believes that he is just there to grab the list. However, the cult, they kill him and blame it on pro- choice people because he was going there to protest the innocent lives. The next day, it is June 4th, day 97. Winter gives Beverly a plane ticket to Butte, Montana and tells her to get out because Beverly is just gonna end up getting hurt and this is Winter's way of apologizing for framing her for the murder of Samuels. However, she believes this to be a test so she declines Winter's offer. Kai is growing increasingly paranoid about this whole situation. He believes that he is being watched by the government, that there is a bug in his cult. So he looks everywhere for a bug to see if he's being listened to and then he gets a bunch of hallucinations by Charles Manson himself. Charles Manson says that he needs to identify his quote-unquote Judas, who's the one that's going to end up doing him in. Then, from out of nowhere, Allie shows up and tells Kai that she, quote, found a bug. Bibi comes in from out of nowhere. We haven't seen her in episodes. She basically accuses him of breaking their deal and going by his own rule book now and not following her every instruction to unlock the female rage. He's really just doing it for his own motives at this point. So <clears throat> before she can try and kill him, Allie comes out of nowhere and kills her. Oh, a twist we weren't expecting to show that she is loyal to Kai. We then get a scene where Winter shaves Kai's head and this would be the final scene that we will get between these two mm -hmm. because then right after Winter claims that she would like to leave the cult, Kai originally says he's okay with it but then he reveals that he found the train ticket to Butte, Montana in her purse. So he accuses her of being the mole. He then strangles her. And so Winter is now dead. Speedwagon fleeing the scene, getting into his car, grabbing the tape recorder out of his pocket, throwing it and beating it across the dashboard of his car. And that is when Allie joins him in the car and the episode cuts to black. This is the end of the board. So I literally couldn't put anything below that. So all of this happens in episode 11. 
So let's get on into it. So we get a flash forward to May 28th, 2018. So it's a whole year later. Kai is in jail. Yes, in jail. And he basically swears to get revenge on who did him wrong. And he recruits a couple of girlies in the joint, including one of the officers to help escape him. He also meets this kid named Trevor. Now Trevor is important for later, but we're gonna get into that. We then move to day 99. So just two days after the last episode ended, and we see that Kai has now changed his plan from the night of a thousand Tates to a night of a hundred Tates because it's really hard to find pregnant women in the area. We then get a flashback to two days earlier, leaving off from when Allie confronted Speedwagon in his car. She finds out that Speedwagon was working for the FBI and Allie finds out that he can't contact the FBI and it's just a recorder and he brings it back to them. He doesn't actually like talk to them. So Allie then kills Speedwagon and frames him as the bug when she gets back to Kai. So we cut to day 100. Yes, the 100th day. It is now June 7th. On the night of 100 Tates, Kai prepares his men using watermelons to practice stabbing pregnant bellies. Allie then tells Kai that Winter was not the bug, it was Speedwagon. Allie evacuates the house and jumps into an FBI van and the FBI raid Kai and his house. Kai is arrested, Beverly is arrested, everybody who doesn't die is arrested, and Allie escapes. We learn that around November 2017, Kai is taken to court and he pleads guilty to almost all the murders except for Ivy's murder. July 8th, 2018, Beverly meets up with Allie and they catch up because Beverly was basically seen as somebody who was taken by this cult and not necessarily somebody who helped form the cult. It is revealed by Allie that while she was in the psych ward, she was approached by the FBI because they had already believed that Kai was in on something. So <clears throat> they granted Allie immunity if she could get in to the cult and take it down from the inside. It is now July 14th, 2018. A few days later, Beverly attends Oz's birthday party and Allie gets a call from Kai while he's behind bars because Allie sent Kai the real fertility papers claiming that Kai is not the real father and this just pisses him off. On August 1st, 2018, Ali decides to run for Senate. We then jump to October 13th, 2018. Kai orchestrates an escape plan using Trevor, the guy I mentioned from before in jail. He basically uses Trevor as his body double and he, he beheads the guy and Trevor's body is used to fake Kai's death so that Kai can escape escape with Gloria. Two days later, on October 15th, Allie is on the debate stage with Senator Hubert Jackson, and when they open for questions, the first person to ask a question is none other than Kai, who has escaped jail. He is handed a gun by Gloria, who's sitting in the crowd, and he confronts Allie and walks right up to her and tries to shoot her. The gun is empty because Flashback to three days earlier, it is October 12th. Somehow Allie gets word that this escape plan is going to happen and she confronts Gloria, the cop, and tells her that Kai's promises are meaningless and he should not be trusted. This leads Gloria to side with Allie and pretend to still be on Kai's side so that Allie can confront him on this national stage. Allie then says, you're wrong, Kai. There is something more dangerous in this world than a humiliated man, a nasty woman. And then out of nowhere, Beverly takes the gun and shoots Kai. We then jump down to November 6th, 2018. On the final day, it is announced that Allie has, yes, she has won the seat for Senate and she is celebrating with Oz. She says goodnight to him and then goes to her bathroom and does her makeup. She puts a hood over her head and then walks away. The same hood that is worn by the women of scum. And that is where we leave American Horror Story Cult. Basically, the season ends with Allie reclaiming her power and 
deciding that she's going to recreate the 1960s to 1970s cult that was scum. So yeah, not only does she have the Senate seat, but she now has a cult of her own, which is kind of ironic because she was running with the campaign to dismantle all cults. So it's kind of funny that she ends up having her own. But yeah, she ends up being the villain in the end, or at least a villainous kind of character. I am gonna get going. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been filming for way too long, so I will see you guys in the next video.